great? I thank God for that. Very glad to have my daughter, Michael, and my grandson, Hon Gibson. Very glad to have them here with us. Thank you for welcoming them. It's just great how God takes care of the family of God. And Brother Dillingham, we are glad you're here from Ohio. We welcome you today. <laughs> Revelation 19 and 7. Music, it was just tremendous. I want to tell you it was tremendous. If you would put that on the screen for me, and I would like for this church, and you can get your Bibles open, and I always like you to bring your Bibles, but if you're just not comfortable following them along, even, even if you've got it open, just maybe look at the wall. I'd sort of like for us to shout this scripture out. Let's read together. Let us... Okay. Let us be glad and rejoice. Everybody in here ought to be glad and rejoice. Today. Boy, you're doing good today. And give... I think I can give honor to him today. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. Wait, and his wife? And his wife hath made herself ready. His wife. This morning, miracles are going to take place here. We need a miracle for Jim Hughes today. And I didn't pray for him in prayer because either while I'm preaching or at the end of my message, we're going to bring him down here. We're going to anoint him with oil and anybody else. And God's going to do healing in this place today. They have found a mass on one of his kidneys. But that's nothing for God. That's nothing for God. He's got that. I want to talk to you today about the church, the Lamb's wife. Now, one last time, put your Bibles down and get ready to go because we're going to get after it here. I want to give a praise to Him like you haven't given in a long time. Let there be rejoicing in the house of God. God bless you, you may be seated. We're headed for a celestial wedding. The beginning of God's eternal enterprise. An ecstatic, never-ending, glorious eternity where the saints of all the ages in a place where the clock never strikes two but one eternal day. I want to tell this church we're just about home. So I think we ought to celebrate the fact that we're near the rapture of the church. Our Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor said, it's the scariest of times, but it's also the best of times. This church, POA, has been marked through 71 years by the Holy Ghost and fire, by zeal and determination and sacrifice and doctrinal purity and by revivals. I remember back years ago, the verbal bean revival when I was just 10, 12 years old. You can remember the Mark Morgan revival where we went 13 or 14 weeks and God did great things. Great men and women of God, you have been of apostolic faith and doctrine. You've been full of power and courage and grit and determination. And you have influenced the years of our youth. We've stood firm in the face of all odds. We've stood firm back in the 60s when they laughed at us and made fun of us. And now everything in town talks in tongues. We went forth preaching everywhere the only saving gospel of Jesus Christ and the Lord working with us and confirming signs following them. This has been 
This place at 2817, this place has been a place where the supernatural has been flowing. We cannot settle down on our laurels. We cannot settle down on yesterday's success. We cannot settle down on yesterday's miracles. The church cannot stand still. This church must have movement. POA must have revival. And POA must see miracles. And we will begin today. The one purpose of the universe from all eternity is the production and preparation of an eternal companion for Jesus Christ. The bride, the judicial co-equal, the church. Last week when I began to study, if those of you that watch Texas Camp Meeting Thursday night, you will know how I was overwhelmed with emotion when I realized that I am the lamb's wife and that everything he's been preparing for from the beginning of time was for me and to get himself a bride from all eternity. All that has preceded from the beginning has been for the marriage supper of the lamb. We're in the preliminary and the preparatory for that marriage supper of the Lamb. God will not be ready, so to speak, to enter into his ultimate, supreme, eternal enterprise until the church, the bride, the Lamb's wife is seated upon that throne with him. Every event in history transpired to serve the purpose, nothing else has mattered. Everything in history, from world wars to civil wars to any other wars to any making of history, everything has served this universe for one purpose. It was created to bring in a Messiah, that a Messiah in turn could bring us the revelation of who that Messiah is, which in turn would give us a revelation of what it's like to be born again and have our names written in the Lamb's book of life. That one purpose was to get him an eternal bride. That's all he came for, was to get him an eternal companion. Jesus Christ incarnate in the flesh came to get him a bride. The messianic race was born and nurtured in order to bring Messiah. And Messiah came to purchase and to give birth to the church, his beloved bride, and take them to the marriage supper of the Lamb, that celestial wedding the beginning of God's eternal enterprise. Therefore, the ultimate goal of the universe is the church of Jesus Christ and his eternal companion. His eyes are on this place. His eyes is looking at this place. You are his bride. By virtue of his faithful use of prayer, he wields the power. We hold the power, not only in world affairs, but also in the salvation of individuals' lives. To yield the Spirit of God with our hands and with our voices after we have been baptized with His power and with His Spirit. I want to tell you yesterday in prayer, when I was praying even after preaching this message Thursday night, I saw a revival happening in this church. I can't tell you what I felt yesterday afternoon when I was studying this message. And when I was calling on God, I saw these doors filling up with our children coming back home. This morning, I want to tell you, your children are coming back home. 
This morning, I will declare to you, that baby that you dedicated to the Lord, it's not in vain. That baby is coming back home. But God will not go over our head. Church, he will not go over our head. He waits for us to act. He will do nothing without us. And the great reformer said, God does nothing but an answer to prayer. Think again. The church is more than a showplace or architect wonder, a take or leave it proposition to treat as something insignificant. God has blessed POA. I was thinking down through the years, our music ministry. I'm telling you back all the way to Jaron, when God's hand rested upon us and our choir sang everywhere. Our church was known for its music ministry for years around the world. People came and got our music. And then when we got Messiah and we began to do Messiah, it began to reach into this community. It began to touch lives and literally hundreds of thousands of people have been changed by Messiah. So I want you to understand when you drove up to this place this morning, you drove up to 2817 Rapids Avenue. I thank God for the way this campus looks. I thank God for Sharon Smith and her team. I thank God for Yankee Clipper and the work that they have done. And they are going to continue to keep up our campus. It is so beautiful. I thank God for this building that we have that God gave me on a napkin in 1985 and we drew it and we built this building. I thank God for our location. I thank God for the veteran center over there that we now own. I thank God for every piece of property behind this building. I thank God for every house with the exception of two that you own on that block and you are debt free and don't owe a penny. I am so thankful for what God has done. But I want to tell you something, that's not the church. This is not the church. This pulpit is not the church. When you got up and said, I'm going to church this morning, and you drove on that parking lot and you said, I'm in church, you wasn't in church. You were only where the building is. When you got here, let me tell you who the church is. There sits the church right there. There is the church right there. There is the church right there. When you look at that person beside you, or you look at that person in front of you, there's the church right there. That's the body of Christ. That's who the church is. I need you and you need me. Why don't you turn to that brother and say, I love you. You're the church. You're the church and there's nobody like you. You're the eternal companion of God. You're the eternal companion of God. You're his companion. You're his bride. You're his bride. Nobody like you. I know you're his bride, and you're a very pretty lady, and you're always on this front row, and we thank God for you, and you're a pretty bride for him. But let me tell you something. You're the bride of Jesus Christ, and all of us here are his bride, but you're his bride. And when we look at one another, that's the bride. When we look at him, may not like him, which I love him to death. May not like the way he talks. I think he's too big. I think he's got too many muscles. And I think he's too strong, but I still like him. I'm sure glad he's one of my bodyguards around here. Hold him. I thank God for you. And my daddy loved you, but God was using the gifts of the spirit and gift of tongues and interpretation. And that's still inside of you and that's got to flow. This is the body of Christ. And the body can't say, I don't need you. The hand can't say to the foot, I don't need you. Don't sit here like we're 10 judging the Olympic or you're a 10 or that's a nine. You're the body of Christ. That's who you are. You're the body of Christ. I'm his bride. Yeah, pastor, you don't know how many mistakes I've made. You don't know how many mistakes I've made. We're all just a mistake that's been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. I don't want you to dwell on your mistakes today. I want you to get your head up. I want you to get your hands in the air. I'm tired of the devil defeating you. You're the bride of Christ. You're the bride of Christ. 
I know how I love Nikki. That's my bride. That's my love, my dove, my fair one. I'm proud to show her off, Larry. That's my bride. There's nobody like her. Such a beautiful lady in spirit and in statue. I thank God for her. I thank God for my mother, such a beautiful lady. She's almost as pretty as Mickey. Just a great... I'm telling you what, that's the best looking 95 year old you've ever seen right there. That's the bride. Even mother's the bride this morning, I'm telling you. That's the bride. You're the bride, you're the lamb's wife. You're the bride, you're the bride. I gotta get that across to you, you're the bride. That's who you are, you're his eternal companion. Get out from under condemnation, get out from under everything that's had you condemned. You're the bride, you're the bride. You're called by his name. You've been filled with his spirit. You're the bride. You're the bride. And God's hand is resting upon the bride. Now thank God for it. Give a shout to the Lord. Give a shout to the Lord. I'm his bride. That's why I'm not going to gossip about anybody. They may have had some problems. May have been some of our people have been on the front page of the newspaper. That's okay. We're going to put you on the front page and the back page of what God's done through redeeming you. Look at her. Look at her. I can see my dad preaching this message. I'm the bride. Man, look at me. Daddy would take his hand when he'd talk about it. He'd do his hair. Look at me. Look at me. I'm the bride. I'm the bride of Christ. He's in wonder of me. He's in all of me. The majesty and his power and his passion and his love and his example. I'm his bride. And the church of the 21st century, we must demonstrate the same supernatural power that operated in the book of Acts. I'm glad we're the United Pentecostal Church and we have a book called The Manual. But I'm not preaching out of the manual today. I'm not talking about the book of Manual. I'm not talking about some book that you're reading of uh, some Christian author. Today, I'm talking about the book of Acts. <laughs> Acts means the book of action. This isn't a book where we just make plans. This isn't a book that's just staff meetings. Guys, this isn't a book with just organizational charts around here. This is a book of Acts Church. I'm not backing down. We got a call yesterday in Billy and Calum. And if you haven't heard, Billy and Calum are in, they had to go to New Orleans with Cohen. And they uh, went to the emergency room. And now they put Cohen in uh, the ICU. And they are feeling his heart. And the main doctor came in yesterday and said, you won't go back home. How old is he, 16 maybe? Said, you won't go back home. Why, doctor? He said, because he can't live without a heart transplant. So what? He said, yes, you're waiting for a heart. I don't want you living no more than 45 minutes from this hospital because when we get a heart, we're going to be putting it in Cohen. So that great, handsome, good-looking young man that we've been praying for here, is in the IC unit in the hospital in Oshners in New Orleans, but there's a church at 2817 Rapids that knows how to pray. And right now, through the authority and the power of the name of Jesus, God can put a new heart in Cohen. If he can put a new heart in a nation, he can put a new heart in Cohen. He can put a new heart in Cohen. I know you may not have done it a while, but I wish we'd have a book of ice. Why don't everything in here speak with tongues in just a moment? If you're a guest, either join us or listen to us. Why don't everything in here talk in tongues right now? I did speak in tongues right now. I did Brother Chris talk in tongues. I did Joey talk in tongues. Rob talk in tongues. 
Action! 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 I'm asking for a favor from this church, from this service on. Don't walk in this place anymore and just sit down there and fold your hands. We're a church of action. And if we will take our place, God will take his place. If we will do what we're supposed to do, God will do what he is going to do. Nothing like the church. We got to be a revival, worshiping, giving, discipling church. Ryan, we're going to be a discipling church. We got to disciple people. They're going to come out of every kindred tongue and nation. I don't know if Sister Little is here today. She usually comes at 11 o'clock service. Is Sister Little here today? Would you stand? Is anybody here from any other nationality than America? Would you stand? You're from any other nationality from America because they're going to come out of every culture, every nationality, and every race. There's one right there. We got them from Mexico, and we're glad they're There's one right there. We're glad they're here. They're now us. It's going to be a multi-culture. He's going to bring them out of every area in this city. These are the most exciting days that the church has ever seen. Our world is hurting. Technology has brought us more than we can stand, but yet it's helped us preach the gospel. Increasingly, people are scared, they're sick, they're lonely, and they're troubled, and they're brokenhearted, and they're lost. People are fed up with sophistication and intellectualism that can't dry a tear and that can't relieve a heartache. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that man in Acts chapter three, who was born crippled, lying at Gate Beautiful. People, do you understand where he was? He was at Gate Beautiful. Behind him was the temple. Some historians will tell you they feel like that temple was between 10 and 12 stories high. It was full of gold by the pounds on top of the pounds. The candlestick alone with solid gold. Gold as of Thursday, because I Googled it to preach this message in Texas, was $1,726.85 an ounce. And yet that tabernacle was full of gold. That was all behind him. That's where he was sitting, but it wasn't straightening his legs. It wasn't straightening his arm. It wasn't putting it on his face. It wasn't how pretty the church was. It wasn't matter how great the grounds was. It wasn't changing one thing with all that gold there. But when Simon Peter came along and looked at him and said, let me tell you something, friend, silver and gold have I none. But I've got authority for something today. Silver and gold have I none. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And immediately, and immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he went walking and leaping and praising God. In this room, this morning, there's going to be some immediate lease. In this room, this morning, there's going to be some suddenly. In this room, this morning. We're going to do more in our little regular run of the meal offering, uh, offerings around here. I was over in Texas preaching there, and I went through town, and on the way home, I'd already named them. My grandfather started about eight or nine church over there. Don't have them today to name you. But one town we were coming through driving home Friday was Etal. I said, Mickey Popsy started a church here. He started churches everywhere. One place there was a kid, you've heard me tell this story, drank kerosene. And that baby had been dead and walked in there. My pops, he walked in there and they were waiting on the funeral director to get there to pick up the body. And my, is that right, mother? My grandfather walked in there and said, death, there's not room for me and you in this room and one of us is leaving and it's not me, I'm not leaving. That baby got up and lived.
and her brother came to me at the Texas camp and said, that was my sister. You let me tell you something. That's what's going to happen in this room today. Whatever disease you may have, whatever sickness you may have, God's going to heal your body today. Today, God's going to heal. They told Popsy, Uncle R.D. did one of that cow that they had. You've heard that story. Mom's and Popsy's cow died. They'd given milk. Had died and laying out in the field dead. And they known they told him, said, Daddy, go anoint that. He's R.D. anointed. said, Daddy, go anoint that cow. Popsy took his oil. He walked over there to that cow, anointed that cow, and said the name of Jesus, raised from the dead. That cow got up and kept on giving milk for the next few years. If God can heal a cow, God can heal you today. It's a Holy Ghost revival. We can move mountains. We can tear down the enemy stronghold. It can save families. It can change the mind. It can touch our emotions. He's not concerned about your Ecclesiastes backing. He's not concerned about the card in my pocket. That doesn't matter to God. We got a book of actions that God will answer to. We can knock down the gates of hell today or anything else that may be tormenting you. We can knock it down in Jesus' name. Man, the other day heard about the POA. He'd been wanting the Holy Ghost. Listen to this. He'd been wanting the Holy Ghost. So he said, I'm going to drive down there. He drove down here. He drove on the campus. He was in his car. Came here to get the Holy Ghost. Getting all ready to come in. When he said, well, I'm going to praise the Lord just a minute. I feel something in this car. He threw his hands up. He began to praise the Lord. And in his car, sitting out in the parking lot, God filled him with the Holy Ghost. Folks, he didn't get out. He didn't come in and say thank you. He didn't come in and tell us. He just got in his car and went back home shouting the victory. That's what God does. I don't know if in this room, but it will be at one time today as Charlie Sherrier. Charlie, back there. Would you stand, Charlie? Come on down here, Charlie. What they say on some of them game shows, come on down. The price is right. God is healing. Get up here, Charlie. I'm not going to let you testify. We'll go too long, okay? But just, 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 you got healed, didn't you? Heal completely. Not a cancer cell in my entire body. Jesus killed that cancer in Jesus' name. He did it. He did it. Thank you, Lord. I am that one leper who will fall at Jesus' feet ah! every day of my life ah! and say, Thank you, God. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God, Thank for you. what you have done for me. Thank you, Lord. So you had cancer. Yes, I did. You had cancer. Confirmed. Confirmed cancer. Confirmed. That was how many months ago? Woo! Years ago. December. That was December. And they gave you a clean bill of health when? May 5th. May 5th. There you go. You can't beat that. That's what God does. Sharon Fugler, would you stand, please? Sharon, would you run up here? I just want to show everybody off this morning. She had, her ears had been stopped. Go ahead, Charlie, just walk across there. Keep on praising God. We're getting ready to call for people. People's going to get healed. Sharon, come up here. Sharon Fugler. There you go. What was happening, Sharon, when, you, when your ears popped up? We singing? Were we preaching? What was happening? Oh, I was at a prayer meeting. At a prayer meeting. Tell us what happened. Oh, I was at a prayer meeting. I had been suffering for a long time with um, respiratory sinus. They had I'd been to the doctor. I'd had several steroid shots. Fluid was in my ear. It would not dry up. Antibiotic after antibiotic. 
and I was at a prayer meeting for because of the times. So yeah. I was praying over them, and it was Diane Long and Dia and Dan, and they said, if there anybody need anything, and when it did, I, I came, went forth, and God touched me. <laughs> he dried every bit of fluid up that they said I would, might have to have tubes in my ears because there was, I couldn't take it. It was anything. instantly done. Was instantly. That's a kind of healing. Now, a suddenly. Remember that message? A suddenly. Joan here somewhere. Where's Joan? Is she here? Joan back there. Wave your hand back there, Joan. She had back problems, couldn't stand, couldn't hardly walk. We laid hands on her. She danced. Jump up and down back there, Joan. Well, there you go. Folks, she couldn't walk. That's a miraculous power of God. Judy, come up here real quick. Judy Murdoch. Mother, we're going to tell them if you'll give us just a minute. <laughs> Judy, you were in the hospital. They rushed you. Dale, Linda, the family rushed you to the hospital. And you were in ICU. And what happened? You were dead for how Or Just tell us. I was dead for eight minutes. Flatline for eight minutes. They were uh, even uh, fixing to uh, plan a funeral for me. But Jesus came to my rescue and raised me up. Thank you, Lord. Now wait. Wait. This wasn't, folks, this wasn't at POA. This wasn't one of our nurses. and We got the best doctors and nurses here, but it wasn't one of them. This was in the hospital with all the machines working on them, with everything hooked up, she flatlined. For how long? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. And yet we prayed. And here she stands this morning. Somebody ought to have a shout. Praise the beauty. Jim, y'all come on down. Larry, tell them about the miracle God gave you. About a year ago, my doctor said that I, it, it could be cancer. My PSA numbers were up, so I went to Houston, and the doctor there said, no, I don't think that's what it is. It's something else. So they started working on it for about a year. A couple of months ago, the numbers were elevated. He says, uh, we need to do an MRI and maybe a biopsy. So we did the MRI. Went to, my wife and I went to eat. We came back. When he walked in the room with the MRI, he said, it's a miracle. Uh, the first words out of his mouth. The doctor. The doctor said, it's a miracle. We don't even need to de do a, a, a biopsy. We don't need to do anything. It's perfect. Uh, pastor, I hate to do this to you. You I don't know. do nothing. Don't eat nothing. Go. We got a pastor from Dayton back there. When I was dating my wife, which you know was a few years ago, her brother was so angry at God and angry at his mother and daddy that, his, that he left home, joined the Marines, said he'd never come back to church, never come back <laughs> to the house. And for 40-something years, he never did. My mother-in-law dropped dead about four or five years later, and of course, that even made him worse and more bitter. But he retired to Dayton, Ohio, and... Uh, my mother, when I was dating Pat, when we would, when I would go home on Friday or Saturday night to drop her off, her mother was always in that den, travailing for her son. And her <laughs> she dies 45 years past to show you. You said these kids and all, you're gonna come home and gonna be safe. He's uh, living in Dayton. He retired in Dayton, Ohio. The, the minister there, the pastor from the little church there, is also a postman. He's delivering mail in my brother-in-law's neighborhood subdivision. If you think that's an accident. One day he forgot his bottle of water. He brought a bottle of water every day to work with him. He knocked on the door of my brother-in-law and said, look, I forgot my bottle of water. Do you have an extra bottle of water? My brother-in-law said, sure. He went and got him a bottle of water and they were talking and the pastor said, you don't sound like you're from Ohio. He said, no, I'm not. I'm from Louisiana. He said, what part of Louisiana? He said, Alexandria. He said, have you ever heard of the POA? 
He said, that's where I went to church. <laughs> but they became friends. He began to go to church there. He called me one night. My brother-in-law said, I want you and Pat to drive to Ohio to baptize my wife in Jesus' name. Ah, get on your feet and give a shout to God. Get on your feet and give a shout to God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What he's going to do for you today. Now, if you have a need in this room, I don't care if it's every one of us, probably most of us do. If you have a need in this room, you move out from where you're standing and get as close to the front. Some of you on the front, get up on the platform. Come on right now, move out in that aisle. Come down here and God's going to supply your need, whatever it may be. If you've got a sickness, if you've got somebody in your family that hadn't been saved yet, you've got a need in your family that need, you walk down here in the name of Jesus and we're going to speak it by faith. That's it, get close. Come on, get close, everybody. Get close, everybody. Tammy, y'all come on down. Get close, everybody. They say, they say, now, if you're comfortable doing this, either to your husband or your wife, or lady to lady or man to man, lay, per lay your hand on the person beside you and speak the gift of faith.